<clears throat> there we go. How are we doing, everybody? And welcome back to Crime Theory with me, Ron Swanson, and of course, my co host, John Wedger, the ever knowledgeable encyclopedia of true crime. We are excited uh, to be back and to be talking to you guys tonight. And how are you doing, John? I know you've been uh, away and doing some exciting things. So, how's the last few weeks been for you? Yeah, yeah, good, good. I've been out in Eastern Europe. I've been um, promoting my pants women against depression. So I've been uh, got Poland, Czech Republic, Lithuania. I chose these countries because they're very, very high on the, the suicide list, especially Lithuania has got the highest suicide rate in the world. So I've been going out there sort of promoting my uh, uh, cold water therapy and... Um, I must admit, I'm sort of happy to be back. Oh, well. Well, listen, what have we got in store for us tonight, uh, John? Tell us a little about it. Well, well um, what, what we got is, is that, you know, people are always asking how do these tyrants get away with it? And, and also, because of the topic that, that I talk about a lot, in mainly the organised uh, child trafficking, sexual exploitation and sexual abuse, and people say, oh, well, you know, there's no proof, especially the SRA. Um, and, and why does this never come out? And how deep does this go? There's this usual sort of plethora of questions. This case is going to answer every single burning question anyone has about organisations, about Satanism, about child trafficking networks, about procurement of children, about those involved and how they cover this up. Um, it's not a UK case, but you will see such striking similarities between most of the cases we, we spoke about, uh, more so in respect to the uh, couples who killed up Fred and Rose West. Um, and like I said with them, I generally believe that, that Fred um, and Rose were involved in something massive, monumental, on a scale of the dying stuff. We drew parallels between Fred West's death and that of uh, Jeff Stein. This next case is, is, is going to tie up every single loose end everyone's got. And this is a case of Mark Paul Allen Dutro, oh, a wow. Belgian national. The Dutro case, yeah. I talk about it nonstop on, on my, uh, my work. If people don't know about it, well, you obviously haven't researched my work enough. Yeah. But all you've got to do is Google the Beast of Belgium, uh, Dutro, D-U-T-R-O-U-X. And, that you know, the other thing I, I want to say before we, we kick off with all this run is that um, we, we've been doing this show over the, the past few weeks now um, and revealing a lot of stuff that is quite new to some people, right? But how predictive was so much of what, what we've been on about? Just look at what has happened in the last month since we've been doing our podcast. Yeah, Sharon Carr, Sharon Carr has made the news, and she is up for parole. Uh, you know, and we were going on about Sharon Carr and how dangerous this woman is—a teenage serial killer um, and Satanist. Um, so she made the news a little while back. Beverly Alec came back into the news as well because they've drawn parallels between her. And and this other monster, Lisa Letby, and Lisa Letby is the the girl who's just been sent down for life, of course, for the murder of, of you know a dozen or so um, young babies. And when you look at Letby's offending, well, my word, if it is not a blueprint of Beverly Alex, I don't know what it is. A hundred percent. And you know we've covered both of these cases. I'll leave links, but make sure you're caught up with every episode of the series because they do get more and more intertwined really as they go uh so i mean mark detro i mean there's not much uh, the, i'm sure a lot of you will have know uh, this case i'm sure some of you won't this is going to be one where i'm going to let john just go with the flow on this uh because i imagine there's a lot to get out and to cover yeah so yeah yeah so what i'm going to do is just just give a, a brief pricey of, of mark detro um uh, his convictions his early life and then i'm going to start tying up all these loose ends and answering these burning questions because this is without a doubt uh, a case in living memory this occurred you know came to prominence in 1996 and it provoked the biggest um uh, mass uh, protest ever um, and that was the white flowers march in, in brussels in belgium at 
the anger by the public at the government's, the judicial system and the police's cover-up of, of, of child murder on a massive scale. Um, so Mark Dutro, um, you'll see a lot of parallels between Mark Dutro and all the other male killers that we've dealt with. Very, very similar traits. Um, and why, oh why, do the police um, in, in Europe and the UK not do basic level profiling? I never know, because we have actually um, profiled these people. And we profiled Lisa Letby before she even uh, came to prominence. And the thing is with Lisa Letby, they came up with the same nonsense with her as they did Beverly Alec. She came to notice um, people spoke out about her. They were silenced and the NHS covered it up, which is exactly what they did um, with Beverly Alec. And there was major police failings as well. So we're seeing the same pattern. So let's go on about Mark Dutro, okay. born the 6th and 11th, 56 in Belgium. This guy's a serial killer. He's a serial rapist. He's a charmer. He's a drug dealer. He's a car thief and he's a petty criminal. Now, doesn't that tie in with Fred West um, and and with the Moore's murderer, Ian Brady? Again, petty criminals coming to notice um, early on, dysfunctional, uh, the same unskilled labour drifters the same pattern we're seeing with these these men all the time he, he, he was done for the abduction of five girls in 1989 again he, he served a small percentage um of um of the time belgium has got a very bizarre liberal justice system and whatever you're given if you behave yourself you'll only serve a third of your sentence that's the belgium justice system yeah well. he went on uh, to get done for the murder of four girls, he tortured, kidnap of, of six girls, and out of them six, four of them he murdered, or allegedly murdered, because we're going to go into that. They were aged between eight and 19 years. Again, does that not tie in with the case that I dealt with um, in central London? I, I dealt with uh, girls between nine to like 15 years that were involved. Very similar age demographic there. This seems to be uh, the, the chosen age group for these organised parties and procurement for these uh, pedophile rings and, and satanic ritual events going on as well. The thing is, he was he was arrested in 1996. It took eight years before he was convicted. Eight years. And we're going to go in to some of the uh, problems that arose uh, during that that trial period, and this is incredulous. It really will blow your mind what went on. He had his accomplice again, his his wife, Michelle Martin. Um, so we see this couples who kill um, women. So like minded women meeting like minded men mm -hmm. with murderous intent, and then you yeah. get this uh, unbelievable combination, and it sort of um, raises the danger level not twice, but but more than that, um, he was worked with also an ex-military guy called uh, Michel Lelevre. Um, Michel Nihul. Now, Michel Nihul is a very, very tricky customer because he was, was um, Detroit's main sort of um, partner in this. And if anything, he was running it, Michel Nihul. And he was a businessman. Uh, he was given 25 years. Um, and he only served five years of that, and then he went on the missing list. Um, and he was an organiser of the sex parties. And there was also another guy called Bernie Weinstein. And uh, on the lead up to the um, to the to, to the trial, um, Dutro uh, killed him, but he killed him in a very satanic way. He buried him alive. Uh, that starts giving away hallmarks Jesus. of that this guy is involved in very sadistic possibly ritualistic um, um, a murder. And we're going to show that Dutroux was an active Satanist. And this sort of bolsters up the theory that I've got regarding Fred West being involved in it. And like I say, you know, to harm a child is, is evil. To rape a child is a devil's work. Um, yeah, and people will one day realise that this is a binary issue. This comes down to good versus evil. And you shouldn't, in my opinion, try and confuse a matter any more than that. 100%. You know, so. Um, well, I think you've set the stage 
set the stage pretty vividly there, uh, John. If I, have to, if I, you know, if I do say, so you know, take us down this dark, this dark journey yeah. into Mark Dutroux. Right, right. Let, let's look at the profile, like we've done all the others. Dutroux, uh, his parents were both lecturers, the teachers, right? And and he was born in a time when Belgium still had an empire or part of it, and their main stronghold at that time was the the Congo. Um, in the sort of Central African tropical belt. And there was a lot of atrocities went on with, with the Belgians and uh, the countries that they governed. And the Congo, a horrific um, human, um, uh, uh, what do they call it, um, rights violations went on there. Uh, Dutroux lived out in the Congo in his early years with his parents. And Dutroux, it turned out, was, was abused uh, physically, uh, mentally and sexually by both his mother and father. Um, so, again, we're setting the scene. We're, we're going very much down the same profile now as Fred West. He's a very damaged person with an emotional intelligence which is incredibly low and, and sexually abused by his mother. So we, we're crossing these boundaries now. You know, we get boundaries are going, they're smashed, and um, uh, all trust issues have go, gone out the window. So he's abused by the one person that should be protecting his mother and like we've mentioned many times on, on these uh, set of interviews that um, when, a, when a woman abuses um, it, it is with a viciousness that a man can't master and we've seen this with um, Beverly Allett and with Lisa Letby we don't see the men murdering the babies uh, in a serial killer fashion like that we see it with the women and they do it in a very, very spiteful, um, spiteful manner. So Dutroux become just a drifter. So he become a scrap metal dealer. So he was getting involved in the, the underworld of Charleroi um, province in um, uh, like the middle section of Belgium. And Belgium, we've got to understand, is a divided country. It is split between the, uh, the Flemish North and, and the French-speaking uh, South. And... Uh, their police forces don't talk, and they have three police forces. I think they've got the National, Local, and the Gendarmerie. And and like we've seen with so many of these cases, police forces do not talk. They don't. And we see it in the UK, and uh, we see it to a greater extent in um, in Belgium because there's a language gap, and um, some of the Flemish speaking won't or refuse to speak French, and, and vice versa. Um, and we get that between the English forces and, and the Celtic speaking forces in the UK. You get that same sort of animosity. Um, I mean, you go to Wales, their police are called the Hethwi. Um, they're not even called the police. So it's no different. And I've actually spoken to a guy who did do dealings with Dutroux, and this guy was involved in, in sexual abuse. He did Damn. dealings with, he would meet Dutroux in a town called Adenkirk on the French and uh, Belgian border, and there would be an exchange of children. So, um, I, I, you know, I can bolster this up because I, I've met a live uh, associate of Detroit's. Um, and I know uh, someone who has uh, worked as as a profiler on the Detroit case, and she profiled Detroit two years before he was caught, and the Belgian police refused to listen to her. Wow. And she spoke to, to, to many victims. Yeah, the so Belgians. Detroit, Detroit, um showed perversion at a very, very early age because he would frequent ice skating rings um, as as a, sort of like a, a man in his 20s. And what he would do was he'd go ice skating and he'd deliberately go up and uh, pull the girls and uh, follow them into the changing rooms and, and rub himself against them and pull them there. Uh, we saw similar traits with Fred West, very um, uh, similar. Um, in 1985 to 89, he was heavily involved in the um the, the child procurement underground racket uh of the sex industry and he he was actively abducting girls he would crudely um uh, with an accomplice just bundle them into a van they'd be walking along it stopped throw them in the van off they go uh i think it was bundy or one of them used to do the same um he was convicted in 1999 of, of child abduction and Thank you for watching the podcast. Here's a word from our sponsor, Rocket Money. Don't you hate it when you've got subscriptions out there that you don't know about, taking all that cash out of your account? I recently found out I had four Amazon Prime subscriptions. Now I've got it down to one. 
Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Most people think they're spending $80 on their subscriptions, when in reality the number is closer to $200. When you're signed up for so many things like streaming services you used to watch one show or free trials for delivery you don't use, it's so easy to lose track of what you're paying for. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. That's rocketmoney.com, S-H-A-U-N, rocketmoney.com slash Sean. Thanks for supporting our sponsor. Link is in the description box on YouTube. Back to the podcast. Um, but you, you also brutally robbed a 58-year-old woman and, and basically tortured her. Um, a very bizarre, um, vicious crime. Um, so this man had no boundaries, you know, and uh, his target seems to be women, which would suggest an early hatred of women. Uh, and bear in mind what his mother did to him and, and allowed his father to do. We can sort of understand that. And the crimes he's doing are showing... Uh, showing a very broken individual. So this would indicate, uh, as his claims, that he was abused at a very, very early age. Um, There were psychiatric reports done on Detroit when he was inside, and they weren't adhered to. They said he's a very dangerous man and should not be released. Yet he was released. Um, In 1995, Julie Lejeune and Melissa Russo, two eight-year-old girls, were kidnapped. They were out playing. Uh, Detroit kidnapped them. Again, one man doing doing two children. It's a nonsense. You know, they, they we, we see this all the time. This is one of the things that really vexes me uh, about these these complex cases and the fact that they pin it all on one man. And when that man mysteriously dies, so does any further investigation. You know, um, I generally suspect that there was more to the um, Ian Huntley, Maxine Carr uh, scenario with the Solomon girls. Uh, um, uh, his Ian Huntley, sorry, Ian Huntley's claims of how the two young girls died, you know, with just in his presence, is is really flimsy. I, I don't believe it. Um, I think there was more to it, and I think there was more people involved. I I think there was a cover up okay. in that Solomon case myself. Um, and maybe that that might come out one day. Um, I did some information which I unfortunately I can't share um, with you. But uh, Detroit then kept them in a dungeon, so he'd make he built a dungeon. Again, Detroit was on benefits. He ended up with ten houses and a huge income. There were deposits of of, of um, uh, fifty thousand francs and five hundred thousand francs at a time going into his account. He was on benefits, yet he had the freehold paid out for um, deeds, no mortgage, on, on 10 properties. And some of them, there were uh, uh, tunnels either built um, to, boat, to to dungeon rooms or were under construction. Um, this guy was not working on his own. No way. No way. Um, he was connected to this uh, Niho bloke, and they, they were supplying girls for sex parties. Um, three months later, he kidnapped um, two other girls, and, and these, these two girls died, uh, Julie Jean and, and Melissa Russo. He kidnapped two other girls, um, Anne Marshall and Effie Lambrex. Uh, they were both teenagers, and they were on their holidays in the, um, the northern region, uh, the region of, um, of Belgium, and he, he just, just uh, kidnapped them, you know? Uh, he just dragged them off the street. Um, uh, that, uh, I think Lambrex and Marshall, we buried them alive. Um, he, kept, he kept the two little girls in, in uh, the dungeons and the other two, he kept them in chains in, in, the, um, in the bedroom, you know? Um, uh, it, 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 a very uh, organised thing he had going. But in 1995, Detroit gets arrested uh, for stealing cars and uh, he gets four months in prison. And he, he, the girls are in the basement. He buried two alive, which again is very, very satanic thing to do. Um, but the other two, the two little ones, they starve to death. 
but the autopsy showed that they had been raped during the period of time when Detroit was actually in prison. And Detroit claimed that no one else had access to these girls and no one knew about them. So it's a blatant lie um, and it was never followed up. And they would not release the bodies to the families. The family were not allowed to see, see their children. They, they did starve to death, but during the period of time he was in prison, someone or someone's had access to these little girls and they were raping them. Uh, and that was evident in the in the autopsies. Um, uh, he, he gets released uh, in May 1996, and he just he just carries on kidnapping. He can, kidnaps uh, a 12 year old girl called Sab Sabine Dardenne. Uh, Sabine is kept in a dungeon, and she is starved and raped. Um, in August 1996, he kidnaps uh, Letitia Delhez. He, he does get arrested um, in August of 1996 and the police find two dead girls and two alive girls and that they are later exhumed the bodies of, of two other girls uh, at one of his other properties. You definitely, um, I mean, it, it sounds like this is an impossible case without a massive network of individuals, both on the police and the yep. political side. To, to I mean, it... it, it it has to have been. It's such a disturbing case. Sorry to interrupt you there, John. But well, at the end, I'm I'm going to sort of add a bit more meat to the bones with this, and and it, this is just the most appalling case ever. It was recent. If we look back at, at the the late nineties as being recent, which I think is, it's relevant. Um, it is similar to so many of the cases that we've been talking about, and this will answer everyone's question. Everyone's questions. This will this will answer the reigns list. This will answer why politicians get away with it, why the intelligence services get away with it, why people die mysteriously and it's covered up at the coronial side of things. This this case and, and this interview we do now will answer every single question. There were hundreds of porno films that, that were seized and they weren't watched. Where did we watch, see that again? We saw that exactly with Fred West. Fred West. Um, there were a couple of them did get viewed um, and they did identify um, gypsy children um, from the Czech Republic. So he was going and he was getting gypsy kids from the Czech Republic, kids that went missing and never turned up again. Jesus. Right? They're, they're, you know, uh, they were used to sex parties, you know? Again, picking on on the, these communities that have um, a very frivolous attitude to child welfare. Um, I know for many years, having worked uh, with these European gypsies that came over here specifically to do the bag snatching and the pickpocketing, and they would let their kids just walk all over the West End. They would. I remember them doing it. And I said to my mate, we, we, we picked up one lad and he was six. He was a little uh, pickpocket and no one came for him. Um, he ended up in care and then the family abducted him from the care home. But that was a bit later. But, you know, I said to my mate, well, what if we were pedophiles? Um, and again, he, he knew that and he was deliberately targeting these uh, Southeast European gypsy communities for their children. You know, the ones that are actively involved in in, in um criminal dishonest crime um in 1995 though just before all of this detroit's mother wrote to the police and said you need to search my boy's house he's keeping children there in the basement now what happened when the police raided his house a certain officer was put in charge okay uh they went in with a locksmith and they were searching the house these videos were seized this officer quickly went through them and he was marking certain ones. Uh, he was, didn't let anyone else view them. He was viewing them and he was putting like an X on them and they were later put up for destruction. So who knows what went on? Again, similar to Fred West. But also, the, they went down into the basement and the, uh, the locksmith turned around and said, I can hear children's voices. And other officers could hear, clearly hear young girls' voices calling for help. And this lead officer shouted the word silent and it went quiet and said, no, there's nothing here. Yet what, what they re didn't realise, where they were searching, taking the videos off a bookcase, it was a false bookcase behind there was a dungeon and the girls were just behind that wall 
and this copper knew it. He knew it, and he oh, covered it up. Yeah, and twice that place was raided. Twice, uh, and them girls were still alive at that point. You know, um, again the videotapes went missing. Uh, that officer was um, months later. One month later, he was promoted. Um, there was a judge appointed. Now that the judicial system in, in like we mentioned in Europe, is um, it, it's different to our common law adversarial one. There, there's is a Napoleonic law system where the magistrate takes the lead role. We have um, a senior investigating officer, an SIO from the police. Uh, meant to work totally independent with no political intervention. We know yeah. that that's bollocks, but uh, that's the system. There, the magistrate guides it. They had a magistrate, an incredibly well-respected, well-rounded um, and decent guy, right? He was put in charge of it. He started um, really making headway with the case. Um, he was quickly removed because they said that he attended uh, a remembrance service for the girls with the family, and they said it was conflict of interest. It's not. He was just being a good guy. And he was replaced. So get this. So this guy was one of the most experienced judges in the country at dealing with murders. He dealt with many, many investigations of murders. Best guy for the job. He was replaced and put... His replacement uh, was new, to, to the, the magistrate position and had never, ever taken part in even a minor investigation. And he was given the most important uh, murder investigation, multiple murder investigation oh that God. country has ever had. And it turned out this, this magistrate was a friend of uh, 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 and had links to Michelle Nihu, one of the co-defendants. Yeah, it sounds so, a lot like the, the, the original judge wasn't on the payroll, if you know what I'm saying. Of course. Um, there, there were thousands of, of, of hair samples which were believed to be from 25 different girls. Not one of them was tested. Um, Ridiculous. The, the coroner refused to do autopsies on the girls. Um, it sounds like the uh, sort of similar incompetence that you referred to that you experienced with the British. Um, 100%. That's unreal. Carry on. A a absolutely 100%. Seven police officers had links to two to tro that were on the case, seven of them, right? Uh, the reviewing judge said it was not down to stupidity, corruption, and incompetence alone, and, and said that de tro had to be protected as a police informant. That was the only explanation. So this now ties in with Jimmy Savile. And like we mentioned about Jimmy Savile in an earlier episode, I, I clearly stated that I generally believe Jimmy Savile was a high-level not just a police informant, but an intelligence services asset and informant. I think Dutro was the same. I think Dutro was not the murderer. He might be a pervert, but I don't think he was this big child abductor rape killer. Um, he was he was just low hanging fruit. He was just a minor level monkey that they used. Um, at, but he knew a lot. Dutro knew a lot, and so did Neho. They knew a lot, and that kept them alive. And I think that. The people that were involved in these sex parties, because when it did go to trial, um, the girls were mentioning people they'd seen on the television. They'd mentioning politicians. Uh, there was mention of someone very high up in the clergy. I had good information on this member of the clergy um, and that he was involved in, in killing two of the girls, killing two of the girls at a party. By by impaling them wow. originally on, wow. on like a concrete dildo, uh, that's the information I had. Um, this is the level that this went to. This went to that sadistic level that kids were murdered. It was videoed. Everything was recorded. But but when it went to trial, it, the only the only one, who, well, two of them was Nihu, who, who served a fifth of his sentence, and Dutro. Um All the others that were involved, no no one else. Right, there were 500 civilian witnesses. 500 civilian witnesses. Right now, this isn't for one man working alone. If they had 500 witnesses, <clears throat> right, and out of them 500, 30 were murdered. No, and out of that, the 30, uh, another 60 went missing. 
So 90 witnesses disappeared. 30 of them were murdered. They, of they the witnesses? The Nin- 90 of the witnesses disappeared or were murdered? Yep. That 90 what? went missing out of, and out of the 90... Out of 500, so that's that's close to one in five. Yep, 30 of them were murdered. They, they were thrown in front of trains. They I'm, were electric, I'm, no, they were I'm no expert here, they, John, but that statistic seems slightly skewed. De- they were decapitated. There were police officers that had been on the case from the start, were found shot in their home with their own service revolvers. And every single one went down to suicide. Every single one. Suicide, suicide, suicide. Police officers. There was a prosecutor. Um, he was found shot in the head in his office. There was one guy who run brothels. Uh, he rang the police and said, look, I've got some important information. I want to come and work with you regarding Detro. On the way to the police station, his car was rammed into a building and it caught fire and he was, he was burnt alive. On the way to the police station. It, so it showed that everything was monitored. Um, and anyone who came forward was killed. They were pulling out bodies all over. If, if you watch that film, um, what's that 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 gangster film with De Niro and Pacino? No, sorry, um, uh, Goodfellas. You know when they do the bank robbery, and then all of a sudden yeah. people are being pulled out. You know, found dead. Or, it's the same. Belgium, a tiny little country, a tiny little country. You know. Um, now, uh, yeah, 6,000 hair samples, and none of them were, were um, and they reckon that that was, came out of 25 different individuals. Not one, not one of them was matched against the missing person database. What? You know? Um, Detroit was on benefits and had assets uh, exceeding 6 million Belgian francs, 10 francs to the pound. Oh, so all right, whoa, 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 whoa. He's on benefits, and he's, he's got on six. Benefits. So, I, I, yeah. so I'm assuming that's the same in Belgium as it is in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So he's yeah, on benefits, true. and he's got a six million dollar estate, effectively. Yep, and yep, assets. yep. And he had shares, stocks. There was transactions, you know, it's going this up to is uh, um, five hundred thousand francs going into his account. Now, at the same time, right, something something happened. There was a raid. On, on a cult called the Anubis Satanic Cult, right? There were they were a satanic cult in Belgium, and there were letters uh, to Detroit and to Win- uh, to Weinstein. So Weinstein was a co-defendant who who went to to turn evidence, and Detroit killed him and buried him alive. Uh, the the satanic cult um, was raided, and there were there was paperwork. Uh, linking Detroit to the satanic cult and it stated that victims were stripped they were stripped naked they were chased in the woods by dogs they were tortured and then subjected to orgies now where have we heard that if you have watched any of my interviews and Sean Atwood's and Johnny Cooper's interviews they interview one of the bravest victims I've ever come across Darren Jeffries. Darren Jeffries was the most prolific arm robber the UK ever had. He'd, he'd done something like 50 armed blaggings in a week. Now, Darren spent a long time in a kid's home called Four Ways down in Bath, where we were subjected to the most horrific abuse. He can name very high up people, Darren, very high up people. And part of the abuse was he would be taken to a woods called Rainbow Woods okay. in Bath. He would be stripped naked and they would be chased by men, dogs, everything else. They would be captured, tortured, sodomized, and some of the children died there. Exactly the same thing. It's And the saints call it the chase. And and it's all to do with the, 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 the god they worship, Molech, the owl. Now, and what, why they do it, it, it's a tribute to Molech because what owls do, owls are vicious creatures, and an owl won't just capture a mouse. And eat it, uh, and what what a male, uh, an owl does, it, it it sort of captures it, then it lets it go. It gives its prey a sense of freedom before tormenting and killing it, right? And and this is what this chase thing is. It's a purely a satanic thing, and Weinstein and Detroit stood under the high priestess, 
of the Anubis Satanic Cult of Belgium. Jesus. And that, that and that was that was verified under a police investigation and that did come out was made public. So we can now say that that, that Mark Dutro and Co were not only were they procuring uh, uh, children for sex for orders and for murder, they were also procuring children for satanic rituals. Now, this starts to explain people like Jimmy Savile um, and, and, and all, all of his shenanigans and why he got away with it and everything else. In this country, people tend to get sectioned more than they get topped off, but they do get topped off. And I, and I clearly state about the warnings I had from the intelligence services and from the Minister of Policing and Crime about my stance. And I was told to back down, otherwise I'd end up going the same way. So it does go on. Um, and, and this starts answering questions. So don't start uh, 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 separating uh, these people into categories. They're not, you know, one size fits all. Fred West, in my opinion, as an experienced investigator, when you look at Fred West and the, the amount, the hundreds of people that were missing around him, and bear in mind he was involved in this barn club or whatever that was, you know, uh, this ties in with the, the satanic rituals in barns, people going missing, decapitated bodies turning up, um, if they do turn up, um, and then the sex parties, and then the connections with police, with politicians, uh, everything for blackmail value. We are seeing that all the way through with this case and the amount of witnesses that are dying, getting murdered, getting thrown in front of trains, getting decapitated and chucked in rivers, uh, uh, you know, thrown off bridges, being burnt in their house. One, one woman was covered, covered in ethanol and set fire while she was still alive, and that went down as an accident. She... You know, and, and she was about to talk to the police about what she knew about Detroit. One, one guy had just come out of the army, and he had a garage. He rented a garage, and it was opposite... Uh, lock up rented by Jatro. He went to the police saying, "Look, I, I've got information on this guy. What was going on in his garage? He his foot was found. He went missing, and his foot was found in the river by a fisherman, and his body never was." Um, Damn. Uh, um, so, people involved, people in the church, as I mentioned, you know, I mentioned someone higher up in the hierarchy, and I was told by someone on the inside of this case. I have spoke to people involved in this case um, that um, this guy impaled two young girls for John on it like a big concrete building and it, it pierced their insides and killed them. Did it to two. And he was high up in the clergy. Right. Uh, it's, this is disgraceful. Parliament, there were NATO personnel. Now, bear in mind um, that they've got this, this satanic hotspot in Belgium called the, called the Mother of Castle of the Mother of Darkness um, steeped in, in some very dark history and that is around that castle is where the residents for the European Parliament are um, and in that Belgium is a country that, that is just covered in death if you think of the countryside it was the killing fields for millions of Allied soldiers during, you know, 1914 to 1917, whatever. So it's a, a very, very dark place. Uh, NATO personnel, um, there were 11 victims confirmed, but many, many, many more missing children throughout Belgium. Um, Nihol was released early for good behaviour. I say you only, you only serve. Right, so this satanic order, this is a satanic order of Abrasax. Okay. Okay. And that's what they're called, the Satanic Order of Abrasax. Their headquarters were were raided, um, and there there was um, presents were given to the high priestess from Weinstein and Detro, and there was paperwork confirming this. Um, human skulls were found, as well as blood in jars human blood in jars okay. when they when it sees this as well as human skulls um uh, so we also got links uh i i i can link um 
de Trow to a guy that was involved in Satanism in the UK. Uh, I've, I've had a meeting, I've spoken to this fella. Um, he would come to Belgium and uh, dealings would be done there. Uh, there, there were strong links um, with Finland. Children missing in Finland can be linked to Detroit. Uh, tapes were found uh, of, of, of torture, rape, and murder and cannibalism. So again, cannibalism involving, you know, these children. Um, a, a child born and murder um, we were also found, and and you know, um, uh, in, in in Finland, you know, let's look at these these uh, Benny Lux countries. Okay. Finland, child pornography is classed as a minor crime, a minor crime. In the UK, it's a major crime. It's a serious arrestable offence. In Finland, child pornography is a minor crime. So these countries that have these very liberal sexual action, they, they just become prey to monsters like, like um, Detroit. And now we've That's got shocking. the Schengen Agreement. There, there, there's, there's transport of kids all over the place. Um, and there's no one. I've just driven all the way through Eastern Europe. Um, the only time we got stopped um, was um, at the French border with the UK by the UK authorities. The French weren't bothered, but the UK did stop us and, and do a check. But, you know, drove through um, uh, Czech Republic, Lithuania, Poland, Germany, Belgium, Holland, France. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. So you, you can um, drive all through these places and, and no one's going to stop you. So it's been a bit of a rush job with this. Um, Mark Dutroux, the beast of Belgium, uh, he remains in prison. Yeah. Um, his missus has been released. Uh, Nihal has been released. They're the only ones that ever went through it. Um, 500 witnesses, 90 of them disappeared. 30 of them turned up murdered, um, including police officers, prosecutors. Judges were removed. Journalists were removed. Journalists were murdered as well. What did uh, Detroit, it, Detroit say during his case like when he was getting tried? What was his defence? Uh, I, I think I think he's admitted to the early ones. He admitted to, to minor level abduction, and that was it. Um, and did he, did he not? Else. Did he not ever vocalise that politicians and things like that were involved in this? No, no, no nothing, nothing, nothing. So he's protected. He is protected. That's um, unreal. You know, right from the top, they're linked with organised crime. They were they were linked with, with, with huge amounts of cocaine coming in. All of this is linked. All this organised crime. You know, I, I'm not a, a fan of, of of these gangster podcasts and all that because behind this lifestyle is a lot of misery. Yeah. You know, at, at the very least, these guys go to prison and leave their misses and kids vulnerable. Of course. Uh, you know, so I, I, I'm not the only ones you ever see me talk to are the ones that are survivors of child abuse and or those that have gone to redemption. Through, through Jesus Christ and uh, and I'll happily talk to them all day long but yeah. um, th this whole underworld is filthy um, in my opinion a lot of these top gangsters that get away with it all um, do so because they're, they're involved with the um, procurement and the trading Here is a word from today's sponsor Aura If you Google someone you can find out all kinds of personal information about them this information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers. You can use my link, https dot dot forward slash forward slash aura dot com. Aura is A-U-R-A -A, forward slash Sean Atwood, S-H-A-U-N-A-T-T -T Wood to try two weeks for free and see how many data brokers are sharing your info. Also linked in my description box on this YouTube version, or scan the QR code on the screen. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach and exposed on the dark web, and gives you the recommendations on what to do. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need, all inside one app. Because yeah. that is the ultimate currency. That, look, I've got a colleague who's uh, an investigator out in, well, globally now, but, but mainly Africa, yeah. in, involving wildlife trafficking, a crime. And he said it's 
it's more money than, than drugs and guns put together. Yeah, yeah, right? Now, that's animals. You think of how much money is in the children. And a again, it, it's, it's, weirdly, it's weirdly easier to move a child than it would be animals or narcotics. Let's be honest. I mean, uh, from a oh, oh. from a causing a you know looking out of place or, or or whatever, it's it's shocking just how quickly it has become the number but, one uh, criminal enterprise but, in the but, world. The the thing is, John. Even if you've got a skeptical mind and you're not into the conspiracies and you don't believe satanic abuse is a thing, even if you are of that 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 narrow mindset. I mean, you've got to be an absolute moron not to smell a rat with this case. Oh, I mean, yeah, you, 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 of course. You, you've got to be thick. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I'll be honest. There's bound to be a few people sitting there listening just now who, uh, you know, don't believe in the the satanic stuff and all the rest of it. You, yeah. you need to delve down into this rabbit hole. There's multiple documentaries. The case has been wildly, wildly covered, but I would steer heavily away from the mainstream side and have a look at some independent... Uh, Deep dives, but even even this has been covered by Panorama. Yeah, uh, you know, by by a lot of mainstream by sixty minutes Australia, they've all covered it. Uh, I mean, at the moment, there's a case going through the High Court in Glasgow. Twelve people, of course, that were yeah. accused, accused of satanic ritual abuse and torture of young children. So it it's not that it's not a thing; it is a thing, and that that clearly is testimony to that. Well, um, do, do you know what? We've, we've, over the last few weeks, we've, we've painted a pretty clear picture that there's a massive, you know, P club around the world. We've seen uh, the huge cases like Savile and all the rest of it. And it really seems like cases where there's kids and the same stuff, that's where there seems to be this huge amount of stuff being swept under the carpet, incompetency running rife within the squads that are in charge of it, and misplacements of judges to take care of the case. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Consistently. And, and then they're having, you know, they have their own officers in charge. That's why they have a confidence. And I've seen that because I came up against this senior officer who was, who was one of them. Yeah. Um, they have these people in place. They have their own judges. That, and, and on top of that, they can go about murdering people with total impunity. And this goes to show that this is, for me, not the police doing this. This is the work of the intelligence services, I would say, yeah. because they, they, they will have unfettered access to monitor the airwaves, whereas the police will have to get authorities, everything else. The intelligence services won't. Okay. Um, and so... This is something that, that could have collapsed the, the whole Belgium hierarchy. It could have exposed members of the royal family of Belgium. It could have done a lot of damage to the Catholic Church in Belgium. Of course. Um, businesses, police, the judiciary. Now, all is not lost here because without a doubt, there was a cover up and the the, the the public weren't happy with the explanation. So they started to protest. And over a couple of days, these protests got bigger and bigger and bigger. And for a country as small as Belgium, now official figures are 300,000. I've been told by someone involved with a case, it was just short of a million people marched on Brussels in what, what went down in history as the White Flowers March. Okay. Um, the the fire brigade. This is why I always call out to the fire brigade, because on many occasions they've come they've come to the assistance of of injustice and they've caused change. The police won't never do it because you can buy the police's silence with their pension, um, and they, it's easily bought. Shut your mouth and and they and the discipline structure and the hierarchy and uh, it, it's easy to do with the police. It's like doing it with the military. Very very similar. Um, the fire brigade is slightly different. They're a bit more free thinking. Uh, so the fire brigade was so appalled that they went out and they opened their hoses on the parliament building and blew all the windows out, so stating that this place needs to be cleansed from the outside in. Um, and a million people just descended on parliament. Uh, so they opened up the commission, the Nihal and Dutro commission. Again, 
a bit like our independent inquiry into child sex abuse, the IRCSA, yeah. which I was a, a core national core participant. Um, what good did it really do? Um, nothing really. It's just the public get what the public want, and they seem to be happy with that. Oh well, they looked into it. Nothing to find. Let's move on. Which is bollocks. You know, the public shouldn't settle for that. Um, it's almost like the majority the... of the public, once they hear a task force has been put in place, they're satisfied with that. There's very little follow up yeah, with course. the public. There's nothing they, they can't be bothered. They sit down and watch football, uh, watch Katy Perry in concert. Yeah. You know, everyone's happy and, uh, you know, put the Only Fools and Horses Christmas edition on and that's it. They're, they're, they're happy. Um, but what this shows is that. Uh, you know, we always see the low-hanging fruit getting caught. Yeah. And if they don't shut their mouths, they get killed. I think this happened with Epstein, with Fred West. Um, I think Ian Huntley was, was sectioned. Um, he was put straight away into um, Rampton uh, whilst on remand. He was remanded in Rampton. Um, and th I think these, th these are done to these people because th th they need there is a need to silence them. And again, when they're segregated and uh, they put into into Rule Forty Three segregation, yeah, they're, they're amongst their own, so they can't really share that vital information with the general populace, the general population of the prison. Now, something's interesting occurred um, uh, during the last few weeks because Ian Watkiss, the uh, child rapist, baby rapist from the um, yeah. band The Lost Prophets, who was um, uh, a long-term boyfriend of Fern Cotton. Let's remind everyone of that. Um, she's been very quiet on this topic. Damn. Bear in mind, he, his his ex-girlfriend uh, came forward and spoke out and, and nearly lost her children into care for doing so. And she said how anyone involved with this boat doesn't know these are people. I don't believe it. Well, Fern Cotton, where's your, where's your evidence? Um, she's been very quiet. That's and look at her Look. Look at her career booming. Um, again, no inference drawn now. But but Ian Watkiss, his files have been have been locked away, right, for thirty years. Right, he got a forty year sentence. Forty years, it's thirty year maximum. He got a forty year sentence. They did not disclose the true extent of his abuse. It was that horrific. Oh yeah, right? I mean, I've, right. I've I've went deep now, into he, the case, and it's now he, it's it's bad. He, He's on life support now because other inmates got hold of him and they tortured him for six hours. I want to know what did he tell them? Because I think that they tortured him for information and I think he gave it. Um, I think he knows a lot, that wow. guy. Okay. And those who tortured him, they probably know a lot now. And I, I would say watch that with, with monumental interest. That case of Ian Watkiss from the Lost Prophets. Yeah, interesting. Watch that with, with, and again, there was loads of information put out about him, and and you know what? None of it, none of it was ever acted on. You know, he came to notice very early on in his career, um, and the police did nothing. South Wales Police did absolutely nothing That's crazy. with it. So we, we we see the same thing occurring. Time and time and time again. Yeah, and again, um, it's it's when you see cases like Ian Watkins, and you had fans of his literally bringing their babies to him. It was it was pretty yeah, messed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, um, I can't believe people still um, listen to Michael Jackson. Why do they still play his records? It's it's just I can remember being on a um, on a profiling course with um, with the police and. Uh, uh, the, the 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 doctor who does the profiling, phenomenal individual, and he said, look, you know, uh, Michael Jackson has got all the hallmarks of a, of a traumatized victim and a and a dangerous child. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, you know, people still see him. Yeah. Uh, oh, anyway, it's another thing. But you, I mean, I mean, there's, I, there's some wild I, theories. I, I, there's some wild theories about Michael Jackson. Uh, one of which is that he's still alive. The, there's a there's a guy uh, with a, a burnt up face that uh, as soon as Michael Jackson died became Michael Jackson's most outspoken fan and it's oddly well, similar in voice and face. 
Well, Matt, and David Bow is the other one, isn't it? There's uh, someone else come forward um, uh, about David Bowie, about one of his fans who looks exactly the same as him. And yeah. Talks about him. So, Interesting. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? But um, we shouldn't. What well, my point is, we shouldn't be looking up to these people. We shouldn't. Um, we should see the music industry and the entertainment industry now. We should see it for what it is. Uh, a nest of it's absolute proper. It's problems. proper gone to some wild places. You know, it really, yeah, yeah, it really, really it, has. Um, well, uh, look, I mean, I, I don't know if there are any questions regarding any of the, the, the topics we've raised over the past few weeks, but this case will answer everything. Yeah. It will answer how, uh, you know, uh, an unskilled labourer uh, can rub shoulders be protected and, and, and know people from the judiciary, from the clergy, from the entertainment industry, from the everything. They have a huge amount of money. Um, I mean, the six million, the six million in assets, the payments, the ninety dead witnesses, the 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 lack of professionalism with the evidence handling. It is it is by far the poster child for this stuff exists. Yeah, and and I, you know, this wasn't that long ago, and th there'll still be living relatives of the people that were murdered. I mean, the scars on, on of Belgium are going to be. It's a small country with yeah. a small population. It's not a big. It's not got a huge population. I, I I don't know exactly what it is. It's very industrial. Um, you know, it has got some very deprived areas, and it's got quite a, a high crime rate and everything else. Um, but. You know, this guy was, he was getting away with it. He was getting away with it. And we saw Jimmy Savile, what he got away with. And, and we sit there and think, why did he never come to notice? Well, look at the Detroit case, because he was that connected. That's why that connected. And it goes to show that there is a force above the police force and maybe above the intelligence services. Um, the Queen even said it, that she said it in one of her, uh, 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 things regarding the Diana murder she said there are dark forces at work of which no one really knows yeah, and what does she mean by that dark force the only dark force yeah. I know is, is Satanism and we're talking but, we're talking about a woman who doesn't uh, misplace her words yeah, yeah the queen said it there are dark forces at work she's telling us she's telling us what's going on yeah and and, and many have gone on about the shadow government there's been many. I think even Boris Johnson went on about the, the men in grey suits above us. Yeah. Um, it's all there if you want it. Ignore it if you want, but it's all there. And their commodity is the children. It's the children are their target. Of course. And if they can do it through poverty and dysfunctionality, well, well long may that continue in their eyes. Because yeah, it will be a ready, ready stream yeah, of, yeah. Of, of victims for them. Um, so... Uh, you know, um, this one I've left till the end because it it, it really is the crescendo. Um, it it's it's like up there. You know, if you've got this on the top trumps of uh, serial killers, yeah, you're going to win it every time with Mark Dutro. Every time it covers, it's got everything. Yeah, it's got everything you need. I mean, all the ingredients of a of a good horror film and a good political espionage and everything all rolled into one. Um, so please uh, study it. And it yeah. explains the range list. If you look at the range list, they're going about it constantly. The range list, look at the range list, Google R-A-I-N-S list. It's there and it shows all these people, how they know each other? Well, this explains it. Yeah. This explains exactly how they know each other. Uh, no longer be scratching your heads, people, over how this is allowed to go on. Um, but I just think that what we've covered over the last few weeks, it's it's bizarre how it's all come back in the news. Yeah, it, it's you know <laughs> quite quite thinking, literally, oh, well. quite literally, it has. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we were you know not even figuratively, literally, it it resurfaced. Do you think Everything if we, we uh, almost if we started predicted. putting pins in a timeline, we're going to start seeing periodical patterns. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. and and they would all go along the same. The, the same pattern, all of them, and they will show themselves these people very early on in their offending 
Uh, you know, they will be highlighted. And really, the authorities, if they really care about it, um, they should they should be on it. But listen, you know, you can abduct, rape, kid, kill kids. Ain't no one coming looking for you. But uh, you know, a 16 year old autistic girl says the word lesbian on social media. Um, she'll have six coppers around the house screaming, shouting, yeah, and threatening, and dragging her off. So that's shocking. That, this goes to show the level of, of, of policing we're at yeah, now, yeah. or the of the or the the depth of of you know foolishness that our police has got to. Um, it's sad, it's shocking, it's wrong. And looking at what they are putting their their intention into and their agenda on is just is is criminal in itself. Hundred um, percent. You know, and and the, by the main crime, nothing nothing happens. And all that we ever see, I'll say this a million times, I'll say it a million more times, is we just see low-hanging fruit getting picked on a criminal justice level. And that's all we ever see. The yeah. likes of Fred West and of Mark Dutro and the other mugs that get caught. Um, so, Ron, that's it. I mean... Um, well, I'd... another f- a- a fantastic and mind-blowing uh, episode there. John, because it is one of the most unbelievable cases that we've seen in our lifetime. And I strongly suggest that you guys go and do a little bit of homework and delve into the some of the documentaries because it's shocking, upsetting, but leaves you with, like John says, no other conclusion that points to cover up conspiracy and a global agenda that uh, preys on children. So listen, thank you everyone for being with us. Thank you very much for uh, for listening. Please leave a like and a comment. Leave us some questions for next week and make sure you're subscribed to the Sean Atwood channel. And John, the, the, the man who swims in his pants, thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge once again with us and we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, and, and, and please buy The Great Reveal by John Cooper. It's... Uh, it's a collage of my work in transcript form. It's in the top teller uh, bestsellers list in three categories. Oh, um, hell yeah. Uh, well, no, no proceeds to me, but please buy it because it, it explains all of this. So it's out there on Amazon, the great reveal, John great Cooper. Reveal. John Cooper, no problem. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Please like, subscribe. And for me, Ron Swanson, as always, be safe out there, guys.